The Pacers for most of my life have either been good or dark horse NBA contenders, but they also feel like a team that's never going to take that lead from good to great. And a lot of that has to do with bad luck in my opinion. In the 90s, they had Jordan and Hakeem to keep them from winning it. And then the one time they make it to the finals, they have to face the greatest duel to ever lace them up. Then in the 2000s, they seem primed to redeem themselves, but then the malice in the palace occurs. It takes them a few years to be ready to compete again, and they run into the heatles. One of their stars becomes useless, and the other has one of the most gruesome injuries of all time. They then start to make moves again and get in Demonte Sabonis and Victor Oladipo, and Oladipo breaks out, takes a team that would go on to win the East to seven games just to suffer an injury and never look the same, and end up getting traded, which leaves us back here, a team still in the middle of the pack, but without any clear direction on how to get to the next level. So where do they go from here? But before I get into that, do your boy a solid and hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. I'm on the road to 500 subscribers. I can't get there without y'all. So go ahead and run up that subscription button. Help your boy out. And with that out of the way, drop the intro. So quick recap on the Pacers season, they had a record of 34 and 38. They were 14th offensive rating and 13th in defensive rating with a net rating of zero, making them the most average team in the NBA. The front office actually is doing a decent job though. They made some mistakes along the way with the hiring of Nate Yorkin, but they correct that mistake when they fired him and hired Rick Carlisle, which is a good move. Now the main thing that the Pacers need to be concerned about is the future of both Miles Turner and Malcolm Brogdon. Both are really good players, but their availability isn't where you would like it to be. Plus the Miles Turner and DeMontis Sabonis pairing really hasn't worked because both really should be used as a five, not as a four. And with Sabonis proving to be the better player, Turner is the odd man out. So I believe a trade is imminent, but I've been saying that for the last couple of years and it still hasn't happened. Finally, I want to say I think the team should be back in the playoffs and maybe even a top four seed. Levert and Sabonis really mesh well down the stretch. I like to have a better score than TJ Warren. No disrespect to Warren. He's a good player. We've seen what he did in the bubble, but I like a little bit more of a hot score. Somebody who you know can get you 30 or 40 or 50 on any given night. That's really cool to have, especially when you got the playmaking of Sabonis and Levert. It would just be really special we had somebody who specialized in just getting buckets. And I understand that Levert can score, but he's more of a point forward type. He does a little bit of everything on offense and doesn't have that takeover mentality, in my opinion. So it's going to be interesting to see how they handle this situation moving forward. I do have some trades in mind and some ideas that just came into my head. And I'm like, you know what? This will be perfect for the Pacers. This might, especially now that they just got Rick Carlisle, he can really make something work. I know he was talking about, oh, he can come up with plays for Turner and Sabonis. I don't want to see that. I just don't. And I'm, if you're a Pacers fan, do you really want to continue to see this front court who's just not working continue to be there? Here's my first trade for y'all then. I will be trading Miles Turner, Jeremy Lamb, and a 2021 first round pick, which fell at number 13 for y'all for CJ McCollum. That's the first trade I'm gonna consider if I'm a Pacers front office. And I'm pretty sure this will get the job done or could be something very appealing to Portland. See, the reason why Portland do it is if they trade Damian Lillard, there's no point in keeping CJ. He's making 30 million a year and he's a win now type of player. I know that he's very undervalued. Nobody's really talking about CJ like he's a star, but come on, he's gonna come out the East and he's going to be a star. I always felt that CJ McCollum is what Bradley Bill is, who just never got the opportunity to be what Bradley Bill got. Like, you remember when John Wall was in Washington? We didn't know that Bradley Bill's become this. You know, Dame's always been there in Portland, so we don't really know what CJ can do by himself. I mean, he might get, you know, a little spurs here and there, but CJ is actually better than some people like to give him credit for being. And I think this would be a golden trade for the Pacers if they was able to make that work. They might have to throw another pick in there because, again, you never really know about CJ's value uh, around the league. Doesn't seem like everybody's super high on him because when they was mentioning him in the Sixers trade, they was acting like the Sixers were gonna get so much worse. They added CJ McCollum, which I just don't believe. And CJ just underrated in my opinion in general. Another trade the Pacers could consider is trading Malcolm Brogdon to the Chicago Bulls for Thaddeus Young and Kobe White. This one is more so for Kobe White. You get to bring back Thaddeus Young, who's a pretty good defender, can do a little couple things on offense as well. You know, he was one of the better front court playmakers last season. He just wasn't talked about it. If you watch the Chicago games, you knew. We used to call him Thaddeus Johnson because he was doing his thing out there for real, for real. But um, that would be kind of cool. You get him back. He's a better pairing in the front court next to Sabonis than, say, Miles Turner. And then you get Kobe White and continue to develop him. He's not really a playmaker, but you have enough playmaking around him 
So it shouldn't be a really big problem that he's not a great playmaker. You know, we can really have LaVert do most of the playmaking, have Sabonis do some of the playmaking. You know, having Kobe White do it won't be necessary if you have those two players backing him up. So that's my opinion, and that's another trade the Pacers could consider. I'm, you know, less optimistic about this one just because we don't really know what Kobe White is. I like Kobe White, but, you know, he's not really shown that he's ready to be a winning caliber player. So we'll see about that. The final trade that I would consider, and this one's like way out there for real, for real but it'll be a Miles Turner and TJ Warren for Gordon Hayward. And Indiana might need to throw in a pick as well, depending on how high Gordon Hayward's value is. You know, Gordon Hayward was going to become a Pacer, and I feel like this might have been the trade that the um, Pacers initially was working with the Celtics on. Maybe the Pacers are really still intrigued with Gordon Hayward. He has some intrigue around the league, especially because he had a pretty good year last year in Charlotte. And there's some rumors floating around that Miles Turner and the Hornets are really interested in Miles Turner. So they could just take that, move on from Gordon Hayward. Because again, he's often injured. Miles Turner is younger. He fits the timeline a little bit better. I mean, you're going to be losing because again, Miles Turner might bust out and become a star over there in Charlotte. Again, his situation wasn't ideal in Indiana. So getting him over to the Hornets, wait, LaMelo just feeding him, getting him in all the right spots. He's athletic, he's quick, and get up and down the court. That's going to be really interesting. And I can see that being something that the Hornets could consider doing. And those are kind of just some trades that I came up with. Something that came to my mind just thinking like, oh, what ways can the Pacers move on from Miles Turner or Malcolm Brogdon? What can they get back in front that's going to help the team right now? And the only one that really doesn't help the team right now would be the Kobe White one. Because again, we really don't know what Kobe White is capable of. We don't know if he could be that winning player that they really need. Because right now they're in the middle of the pack. And do they really want to go full rebuild? I mean... It's kind of tough. I mean, your team is just known for being middle of the pack. You got some talent around there. Try to get the most out of it as possible because rebuilding is a really tough thing if you don't get that superstar at number one or something. So that's just my considerations for some trades that they can make. Getting past, you know, trades and adjustments and stuff that the Pacers could do to, you know, retool the roster a little bit. Let's jump right into the draft. And with the 13th pick, what the Pacers could do is they could draft Keon Johnson, James Bowknight, Davion Mitchell, or Franz Wagner with that 13th pick now the guy i had them taking was keon johnson but you know that was in my mock draft and kind of looking further into it maybe james bonite will be better for them if he's even available right there again james bonite's stock has really risen and he's seen to go as early as seven to the warriors so it's really kind of tough to really gauge where james bonite is going to be at but his stock is rising so he might not be available and if he's not keon johnson still is a really really good you know prospect we don't really know he's kind of raw but he's similar to Jalen Green in some ways he's not as good of a scorer as Jalen Green is but he's athletic he can score he can finish at the basket uh, again I'm a little bit hesitant of his first step you would think he have a really good first step because how quick and how athletic he is but he hesitates a lot of time which slows down his first step and that's my biggest concerns with him plus he can't really shoot the ball he's not a shooter James Bowden is more of a three level scorer which is something that the Pacers can really use Davion Mitchell is older but he's more of a defender type and I really don't know what his ceiling is going to be I think his floor is higher but his ceiling is lower just because of that age and stuff he spent years in college and I'm still concerned about his jump shooting I'm not a hundred percent sold on Davion Mitchell but he also is an option Franz Wagner is really interesting himself because Franz Wagner could be that perfect four. He always kind of reminded me of Andre Karolinko. So I like Franz Wagner. You know, the DeMonte Sabonis pairing with him would be kind of cool. But, you know, they have the option if he doesn't go number 12 to the Spurs, which I have Franz Wagner going 12 to the Spurs. So those are kind of their options. Again, I'm going to say it's probably going to end up being Keon Johnson or maybe even Davion Mitchell. Um, hope they stay away from Corey Kisper again. I'm not sold on Corey Kisper at all. I mean, y'all already have Doug McDermott. I know he's a free agent, but y'all had him. Y'all really want Corey Kisper? I mean, he could be the next Doug McDermott. And no offense to Doug McDermott, we chose him over there in Chicago. I like Dougie Buckets, but, you know, I'm just saying, do you really want to waste a lottery pick on that? The likelihood that you end up with a Cam Johnson isn't all that likely. I'm just saying, Cam Johnson, when he got drafted number 11, we did not see that coming. It worked out for the Suns. Don't think because it worked out for the Suns that you're going to get that lucky all over again. I do not think that Corey Kispert is the next Klay Thompson. Just saying. Whatever. You know, he might be able to prove me wrong. I might be looking like a fool years down the line. But I'm just not going to be sold on that. I'm not buying stock into that. Final thing I'm going to go ahead and discuss today is going to be free agency. And in free agency, I have them re-signing TJ McComb. He was a folklore for this team last year. He was really good, man, for the team. And I would hate that if he left the Pacers. You know, he just fit into that culture. I mean, he was a folk hero and... 
I just love those kind of players. You know, you always need one of those guys on the team. You know, the Marcus Smart type. Somebody who you know isn't an all-star caliber player, but you're going to miss him if he leaves. That's just TJ McCollum. If I'm a Pacers fan, I don't want him to go. Plus, he's a good backup point guard. He's probably one of the better backup point guards in the league. Just like Monte Morris, he doesn't get enough credit. Another guy you should resign is Doug McDermott. I know I just said what I said about Dougie McDermott. But, hey, he's still a really good player. And I would sign him again. Because, you know, he adds that shooting touch. And he had that really good playoff game. Signed Doug, Not playoff game, but um, he had that really good play-in game. He had a play-in tournament game that was pretty decent. So, sign McDermott again. That's pretty obvious. And then other guys that you can go for in free agency again, just to continue to add shooting and stuff. You know, DeMontis Sabonis can shoot, but he's not a person who takes a lot of threes. Adding more shooting around him, because again, DeMontis Sabonis is your best player. That's just the truth. That's what he is. And I think that Rick Carlisle is going to get a whole lot out of him. So I would definitely surround him with some more shooting because he can do some playmaking. I always call him Baby Jokic for a reason. He's probably the best passing big man outside of Jokic. You know, no offense to Bam out of bio. He is also competing for that spot. But Sabonis is the truth. He's fly. And I would definitely take uh, some people in free agents like Reggie Bullock. See if you can get an interview with him. See if you want to come out New York and come to Indiana. That's unlikely. But, you know, shoot your shot. Uh, Austin Rivers, you know, he's scrappy. Get down there. You know, he has his moment when he looks awful. But he also has those moments of brilliance. You're always going to get a good Austin Rivers game at least one time out of the year. And, Again, he's somewhat good enough to, you know, hold out on, especially for that Austin Rivers type game. He doesn't cost a lot of money. Shoot your shot with him as well. Josh Hart, his relationship with the Pelicans isn't the greatest, and he wants to move on from the Pelicans. Take your shot at Josh Hart. He is pretty damn good as a role player. I would definitely like him on my team. And those are some guys that, you know, you should consider in free agency. Again, you know, re-sign TJ McCollum, re-sign Doug McDermott, and then go after the rest of those guys because those two guys – to me, are core members of your team. Maybe I'm wrong with Doug McDermott, but definitely resign TJ McCollum if you can. And finally, if you do lose Miles Turner, you know, in a trade or something, you're gonna need some front court help, mostly for backup spot. Uh, guys that you consider is gonna be Gorgie Dang, Neymar Bay, Lisa, Willie Colston, Cody Zeller, Javel McGee, guys like that. Cheap centers get for you know two million dollars or something. Those are the guys you should be going at if you end up losing Miles Turner because you will need a backup center because outside of him, you know, there isn't a whole lot. That's basically going to wrap up the video for you. If you like the video, again, don't forget to leave your boy a like, subscribe to the channel as your support is much appreciated. We on the road to 500 subscribers and I can't get there without y'all. So go ahead and give me that HBO special. That's the Help a Brother Out special and that's going to be it. Until next time, peace.